my obedience to him, my following of his sunnah. Oh Allah, by the good deeds, by my dutiful to my parents, give me such and such or protect me from such and such and you ask Allah whatever you want. This is the sunnah. And if it was permissible to seek tawassul through prophets, then don't you think these three men had prophets? Don't you think they could have said, Oh Allah, instead of asking Allah through their good deeds, Oh Allah, we ask you through our prophet to remove the stone. They didn't do that. And we will see later on why this is unacceptable in Islam. So is this understood? The third kind of lawful tawassul is through the dua of a righteous man or a woman. The dua of a righteous person. Example, you all know the hadith when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was delivering khutbah on Yawmul Jumu'ah and a Bedouin, and a man came said, Oh Messenger of Allah, halakat al-amwal, our wealth has been destroyed. And transport, we don't have no means of transportation. So ask Allah to give us rain. And the Prophet ﷺ raised his hand. He said, Allahumma skina, oh Allah, grant us rain. Oh Allah, grant us rain. Oh Allah, grant us rain. Until there was, there was nothing. It was a clear sky. Then the Sahabi said, all of a sudden, clouds started to formulate. And the Prophet ﷺ did not go down off the mimbar until water was trickling down his beard. Allah brought the rain from nowhere by His will and command through the what? Through dua of who? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So how did they seek nearest to Allah? By asking a righteous man to make dua for them. He could have stayed at home as the innovators do. Said, oh Allah, bijahi nabiyak, bring the rain. But he didn't do that. Oh Allah, because of the status of your Prophet, bring the rain, he didn't do that. They went to the Messenger of Allah and they asked him to make dua, he made dua, Allah brought rain. So the th if you think someone is righteous, but don't make it a habit. Because the scholars have a long discussion on this issue, but it's permissible. If you see someone you think is righteous, you may ask him to make dua for you. You don't make dua through them. You ask them to make dua for you, for the Muslims and so on and so forth. And this is something known and recognized and the hadith is clear. Clearly indicating that they sought tawassul through the dua of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The polytheistic tawassul is the one we discussed in two lectures. Sufism and the horn of Satan. Which is the idea that someone says, Ya Muhammad, Ya Rifai, Ya Badawi, Ya Ila Akhirihi, Ya Abdul Qadir. When they call on a dead man, directly or a live man in this in this case when they call on him thinking that he will intercede for them with Allah but they are calling him directly and we go back to the same ayat which Allah Azza wa Jalla told us وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاء مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَةً and those who have taken protectors besides Allah they say we are only worshipping them so they can get us nearer to Allah and Allah called this what? Shirk. Allah did not accept this in any way, shape or form. So anyone who tries to get near to Allah by calling a dead man in the grave, which they call a wali, or anyone else for this matter, this is shirkun akbar mukhrijun anil millati. This is major shirk, which will expel someone from Islam. Allah will not forgive this individual if they die in this particular case after the proofs and the evidences have been established against them. Be very careful. And I think from the previous lectures, if you attended, we all understand the idea of what? The polytheistic tawassul. Trying to get to Allah through a dead man or a live man and in a fashion by calling them first. This is unacceptable in Islam. This is the deen of the Nasara and the Jews and the Christians and the rest. It is not the deen of Islam. So that will lead us to the most technical and complicated discussion. The innovated tawassul. التوسل المبتدع What is that? It is to ask Allah, not asking the creation of Allah, like the shirki one, not asking the creation of Allah, to ask Allah, however, not through His names, as we learned earlier, not through His good deeds, as we learned earlier, not through the dua of a righteous man, no. Rather by saying, for example, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi rasulika aw bi haqqi fulan aw bi haqqi nabiyika aw bi jahi nabiyika ila akhirihi. Oh Allah, I ask you 
Listen to this now, according to them. And they, they, this is very common among the Muslims. Oh Allah, I ask you by the virtue, by the status of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu with you. And the worst one is bihaq, by the right which he has over you. So they ask Allah, oh Allah, by the honor of the Shaykh, by the status of the Shaykh, by the right that the Shaykh has over you, forgive my sins, heal my children, ila akhirihi, ila akhirihi. You see how it is? They're, now they're not asking the dead man, okay? They're asking Allah, but they're putting in between them and Allah because of this, because of his virtue, because of his status with you, oh Allah, do this for us. Who does that remind you of? The Christians. That reminds you of who? The Christians. In the Gospel of John, I believe it's chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, or something along these lines. None can come to the Father except through me. That's, that's Christianity right there. You know, you can't get to God except through Jesus. And these people say you cannot get to Allah unless you ask through the, through the virtue and the status of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam or otherwise. It's the same religion now. That's not Islam. That is not Islam and it is unacceptable. Even if some have actually made that mistake. Tayyip. Uh, from among the million now, why do they do this? We must understand. Did they just bring this from nowhere? No. To be frank with you, they did not bring this from nowhere at all. Now they brought this from, let's say, hundreds of narrations. Say tens of narrations. All of them are weak, except two. Pay attention. They brought this idea of asking Allah through the Prophet ﷺ or other righteous people that they claim, through many narrations. All of them are da'if. Now even though they debate the authenticity of these narrations and they claim that they are sahih, they are not sahih, they are not sahih, they are not sahih. And if you were a scholar of hadith, or if you were to refer to the scholars of hadith and their discussion on the chain of narrators, it will become clear to you that these narrations are inauthentic. Inauthentic meaning not authentic, except two. Except two. And these two, the amazing thing is that these two narrations which we agree with them are sahih, are actually evidences against them and not evidences for them. They are evidences against them and not evidences for them. So what are these narrations? Let me quote the narrations for you. The first hadith on Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu anna Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu kana idha qahatu aw qahatu istasqa bil Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. Anas ibn Malik said, whenever, it used to be, whenever there was drought, whenever there was drought, Umar radiallahu anhu used to seek rain, istisqa, seek rain through Al Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You follow me? Anytime there was drought, there was no rain, they will ask Allah, they will beg Allah, they will do istisqa through the uncle Al Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فقال اللهم إنا كنا نتوسل إليك بنبينا فتسقينا وإنا نتوسل إليك بعم نبينا فاسقنا قال فيسقون وفي هذا في بخاري وفي رواية قب يا عباس فادعوا الله وفي رواية في المصنف لعبد الرزاق كن فاستسقي طيب so what did they say any time there was drought Umar رضي الله عنه will bring Al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Now listen, and he used to say, فَقَالْ Allahumma, O oh Allah, we used to, now, now this is where technicality comes in, we used to 